Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard and welcome back to my series I'm doing on making this large bandsaw mill. In the last video we got all of the frame parts ready. They're all ready to go for assembly. So in this video we're going to go ahead and get these things all laid out and get started on some welding. So I know I'm going to need some more width out here once I get the saw head onto the carriage in order to sneak by this log here without having to move it. Although I might end up having to move it before um, the mill gets built, just so I have room here. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and move a couple of these logs out of the way. That way I have a little more, more room over here to my left or to your right. And uh, hopefully there'll be enough room to pass the saw head by that big log over out. there. Make it move, move. And while I'm over here, I'll use the grinder to also remove the plating from the nuts. So I'm going to start welding the nuts in place. I'm going to feed the bolt through the nut so I can set the whole thing down into the hole and then tack it in place. And then I can remove the bolt and I'll know the nuts in the right position so that the bolt can pass through the nut into the hole beneath it. I'm just going to be pretty conservative with the welding here because I don't want to put a lot of heat into this piece of tube because I don't want it to distort it at all. I need these things to stay as flat as possible or as straight as possible for them to become the frame. So I'm going to be a little bit conservative with the amount of welding I do onto these nuts. But I think it should still be fine. There'll be plenty of um, grab here. And the other thing is I can come back and do an overhead weld once I have the whole thing assembled. It should be a little more rigid and it should be more resistant to distortion with all those cross members already welded in. So originally I was going to weld this whole thing up upside down so I could weld the nuts in last. Um, but thinking about it afterwards, this frame is gonna weigh around 1,500 pounds when I get it assembled. So there's really no good way for me to flip it at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and weld it with the cross members installed right side up. So then when I come back and do the cross members, I'll have to do an overhead weld on the bottom seam, but it shouldn't be that bad, it's not that wide of an area. And while I'm under there, I can also do a little more welding around these nuts at that point. So now I'm getting started laying out all of the members for the frame and I made these little blocks out of some scrap melamine. I drilled a hole in it that's big enough for the nut and that fits up underneath the long beams that gets clamped into place and that provides a little shelf for the cross beams to sit on. Now these aren't super perfect. I want to go back and do something different when I actually weld it up. I'll clamp them up from the top side so they're hanging in place but this works well enough for now just to get everything aligned in the right spot. I'm using some ratchet straps to kind of clamp everything together. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just get this thing into square 
and then get it somewhat level or flat by eye and I can go from there. I can use some blocks here to do some rough and coarse adjustments and then I'm going to use the leveling feet. I have four, one on each end and I can actually twist the frame into flat using those bolts. So going just based off of my eye alone, I can see that this corner here is the high corner. So I'm going to start shimming up the other three corners so that they are somewhat aligned with this one. And then I'll go with the fine adjustments from there. This corner's low. Bring that one up a little bit. Ah, I got an idea. Occasionally I have ideas. Let's see how this one works. five and three quarter. 204. Two hundred five. <laughs> quarter inch. Two hundred four thirteen sixteenths. That's pretty good. I think being within a sixteenth of an inch of square at this scale is pretty darn good. And I don't really care that it's perfectly square. It's more at this point, it needs to be flat. It doesn't really matter if it's a parallelogram or a trapezoid, as long as it is flat. So to check to make sure this whole thing is flat, I've run a string from corner to corner. And the idea here is that in a perfect world, if these two strings perfectly intersect in the center, then these two outside members are perfectly parallel. Now, obviously the string can't pass through itself, so I've raised the top string by the thickness of one piece of string so that when these two actually touch, just barely, just kind of kiss, that means that these two side pieces are parallel. Now, as you can see, these two strings are currently touching and I haven't touched anything yet. So that means by eye, I did a pretty good job of getting these things into perfect alignment. Now, what is happening is a little bit, not much. The top string is pushing the bottom string down just a little bit, so that means that one of these two corners can come down, either the corner back there or the corner over there. And I haven't even put the leveling feet onto the ground yet, so the first thing I'm going to do is drop this feet to the ground, and then I can really start to fine tune things with the wrench. So now this thing is supported on the leveling feet, and we've got maybe an eighth of an inch between the two strings, so I can work on bringing down the top here, which I can do by dropping that corner over there. About an eighth left. Using my level here too to make sure I don't end up with a frame that's slanted, I guess. Flat but slanted, runs downhill, something like that. Oh, they're close. <laughs> this one's got a little bit to go on here still. So I got rained out yesterday and today wasn't a whole lot better. It's been raining on and off all day, but not as heavily. So I got out here in the rain and I've been getting all of the cross members installed in the right position. I went out to the steel yard and I picked up a bunch of these pieces of half inch steel bar. I'm using those to suspend the cross members from the side rails. That way the top surface is flush and they should sit nice and perfectly once I get them welded into place. I'm also using some ratchet straps and my chain binder to clamp these whole, this whole assembly together. I don't have clamps long enough to do this like that and multiple clamps hooking together is kind of, um, kind of annoying. So this actually works really well. I have them crossed over, so they're pulling from both the top and the bottom. So it's like having a clamp on both the top and the bottom of the rail. So I have everything, I think, in the right position. So I'm going to go through and make sure that all of my cross members are lined up correctly. 
They're square and all nice. And then I'll go ahead and start tacking them into place. I'll start by tacking along the bottom. Got a nice decent tack on the bottom two corners. Then I'll remove the clamp that's holding the piece of steel to the top. And I'll tack the top two corners and move on. And as I'm going, I'll move my ratchet straps or my chain to clamp the rest of the members to the side rails. So measuring corner to corner, this thing is actually more square than it was when I first laid it out. It is completely, as far as I can resolve on a tape measure, exactly the same measurement from corner to corner. I've also gone ahead and reinstalled the diagonal lines and that is still perfect, like perfect. Um, I wanted to put them over here too so I can make sure that all of the, the cross members are nice and flat and in the same plane as well. So if I come back with a piece of steel, put it underneath the string, it's nice and consistent all the way across all the runners. Now ideally I had wanted to leave these strings in place as I do the final welding, but I think they're gonna get in the way a little bit. I'm actually going to tack a few cross braces to the top of this thing to help to keep it from doing anything weird as I get going on the actual welds. Since I don't want this frame to distort as I weld, I'm going to be very conservative with the amount of welding that I do at once. I've broken the vertical welds up into thirds, and to further keep the welding stresses in check, I'll zigzag around the frame, doing the opposite weld to the opposite cross member. So left bottom outside weld on the first member will be followed by the right top outside on the other end. Welding the center rail makes this pattern pretty obvious since there's no symmetrical rail. Then I can clean up the slag from those welds and complete the vertical seam by welding the middle third. So yesterday before I had to call it a day, it started downpouring on me. I was able to get the beads welded up both the sides and then on the top as well. So all I have left to do is the underside. Now I decided to just leave the string off and just kind of go with it yesterday. Um, I figured that since I have those four points of contact on the ground, if the frame did twist as I was welding, one of those bolt heads would come off the ground. So I was watching those instead and they have not moved. So in theory, this thing should still be flat, but I'll check it again once I'm done. Now I'm going to do the underside here. I'm gonna try and do it overhead, uh, just laying on the ground. I might have enough room, I'm not really sure, but if not, I can pick up one end of it and have a little more space that way. So I'm really happy right now. I took those braces off and then I ran my strings back on there and this frame 
is exactly as flat as it was before I started welding. So I am just thrilled about that. <laughs> and I went ahead and I laid the stainless steel runners and the tracks on the sides here, just in place to get an idea of how this thing is going to look when it is totally done. And we're getting really close to being done with the track. Now, a few people have asked me what I'm planning to do for pads on the bottom of the leveling feet. Well, I went to the steel yard where I got the rest of the steel and I went through their offcuts bin and I found these little three inch diameter stainless steel by three eighths inch thick uh, circles. So these will be the pads for underneath the leveling feet. And then I'll probably stick these things up on some blocks of wood just to get a little more uh, ground clearance and to distribute the force a little more evenly onto the asphalt. So in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and start drilling holes again, except this time they're not gonna be as ridiculous and I've learned a lot since the first time I had to drill those holes. So all of these runners to get drilled for the bolts, so I'll hold them down to the cross pieces and then I'm also going to bolt the, the rails down to the side beams as well just to allow these things to be replaced or to be shimmed or moved as needed once we build a carriage. So that does it for this one. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about the sawmill or anything back in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.